Hey, Jock. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> it's been a long time. It's did, did been you decades. And I, I was wondering about this. Did you and I ever dance together? No, but I have a fun story about that. Okay. In your retirement performance, when all of the principal dance ballerinas were waiting in line in the first wing to go out and give you a bouquet, I was one yeah. of the last ones because I was the least inconse most in least inconsequential. Or what am I saying? I mean, that's a double <laughs> negative. <laughs> Anyways, I was waiting there, and Peter was like, he was sending people out on the, you know, in, he was yeah. timing it, and he looked at me. He was like, "Did you ever dance with him?" And I was like, "Nope." And I walked out and gave you a bouquet. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I thought maybe, maybe we would have done Barber by like yeah. together, yeah. but I, I couldn't remember. I mean, it's been so many years, so. Yeah. I think uh, I was like a second cast and maybe then you stopped doing it or I kind of came into it a little bit after, yeah. after you were done with the ballet, but um, I have vivid memories of you doing Symphony in Three with Wendy when I was in the core and watching you guys just bust your asses every night. And then come back the next morning and do it again. So anyways, we'll talk more about that. Sure. But I'm so grateful that you agreed to do this interview. And it's actually for a very special reason. Um, Google is doing a Google Doodle on November 14th, the day this um, interview is going to come out on YouTube, to honor Maria Tallchief, a legendary uh, New York City ballet ballerina that you and I both know of. Mm -hmm. And um, for uh, Native American Heritage Month. So as I was thinking of how to promote it, I thought I really want to get Jock's perspective on all of that and catch up with you. So yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, I met her I met her numerous times. And um, I remember when I first met her, um, it was when I was in the core of City Valley. And I was so ecstatic because she was at a gala. She was at an opening night gala. So I was just like gung-ho, and I was just like, I'm going to go introduce myself, tell her that I'm also Native American. And um, I got my, my courage up, and I went to her table, you, you know, because all those tables are so close together. Yeah. And so I went up to her, and I just said, um, Excuse me, excuse me, Miss Tallchief. I would just love to introduce myself to you. And I just got into the company, and I went on and on and on. And I said, I'm so proud to be a part of of knowing that you're here, and that I get to introduce myself to you and tell you that I'm also Native American. Megan, she went like this. She went. Go and away. Then she <laughs> <laughs> my whole face just blushed. I was bright red. And I was just like, oh, my God. I was just snubbed. <laughs> but <I'm telling> you. <laughs> and then when you became such a success, did she ever? I never I never worked with her. I oh. always thought that I would. I always thought that maybe, you know, when Mr. B was alive or when Peter was the director, that, you know, we would get together and do something. But it never ha it never happened. But um, I admire her because of her accomplishments. And I've obviously seen her videos on YouTube and, and, and all that stuff. And, and I just, I'm so fascinated because I wish I could have been a fly in the wall to have been in a rehearsal room. Because I heard she was really, really tough. I mean, mm. the things that I heard from Helene Alexopoulos and, you know, all the people that worked with her, they said she was very demanding. And um, I, I wish that I had had time to work with her because mm -hmm. it, would have, it would have been really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did she come on your radar as, as you were a young dancer? Like how soon did you realize there was this other Native American dancer that was such a success at New York City Ballet? Because that must not happen very often that you run into that in this industry. Yeah. Well, that's just it. See, I didn't discover her until I came. I went to New York when I was uh, officially in New York at 13. And that's when I heard, and that's when I found out that she was married to Balanchine, that, you know, that she, that he did Firebird for her, all of this stuff. And I, I, I kind of rediscovered who she really was. And my mom, 
who who was full blooded Navajo, she started sending me material and stuff, books about her and her sister and all that stuff. And my mother was very uh, excited about it because she was like, she was like, you're not the only one. You're not the only one. And, you know, at that time, I thought I was the only one. But to discover that there was Maria Talchi was a huge, huge influence on my whole. And that she was so major. I mean, she was like the first star of New York City Ballet. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was pretty amazing. I mean, to go back and look at all those sort of like the bell tower uh, things on television and the at Sullivan show to see her dancing. I was like, wow, what a presence. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, it was really exciting for me because I thought, I thought I was, I was like, you know, 13 going, I'm the only one. I'm ah! the only one. <laughs> <laughs> but it had already been done. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. How much though in your career did that ever come up? Like, Right now, diversity and inclusion is such a major um, initiative. Yeah. And, you know, like, even like Misty Copeland, like any minority that's like having a lot of success is like thrust into the spotlight. How, in a way, it might have been nice for you to not have that be the reason you were known. I don't know. How, how did that come out? In a, and play out in your career that you were a Native American dancer, but also just a brilliant dancer. I, you know, I, it, it's so weird between the age of 13 and 15, I was just doing what we do every day. You know, we go to class, we dance all day, we work on our, what our body needs to do. But when I got into the company um, in 1981, when I was 16, that's when it was kind of like, oh boy, what's happening? But as you know, we dance from 10 in the morning until 11 at night, you know, and, and that, that was just, that was my world. That was all I did. I did not think about heritage. I didn't think about my nationality. I didn't think about, the only times I ever thought about nationality in the eighties was when I was told to leave a store. Oh, like wow. when I went to go shopping for gifts, uh -huh. you know, and I was, the, I was, I was the Brown guy coming into the store and you know the '80s. Uh, it was it was just like, what are you doing in our store? God. You know, and I was like, I'm here to shop. Yeah, you know? I want to and, give and you money was, for something. <laughs> yeah, I pay for that beautiful pot right there to yeah. give to somebody. But you know, I was asked to leave, and then I um, I remember knocking on the door again because it was raining outside, and this was like between Nutcracker rehearsals. And, you know, I was trying to buy Christmas gifts, and I, I heard about this story. But uh, she she was really, the woman was very mean to me. And I ended up just coming in to the store. She finally let me in. And I bought every item that I wanted to that day. And I made her wrap up every single thing. Because <laughs> I, like, I was like, wait a minute. I know I'm a different color, but I make good money. Yeah. And I dance for a great company and, you know, but she didn't know that, you know, so, but that was, that was one of my first Interesting. situations. Interesting. But it never came into play as you were coming to SA, SAB or New York City Ballet or you never felt like, did you ever feel different or you were just so focused on the dance? I knew that I was different and I knew that um, I didn't look like the other dancers, you know, I, my body type is not the type, the perfect ballet body. And so I had to work harder and I was very quiet. I just, uh, I did my thing, did my job. And Mr. B noted, noticed that in the beginning. I mean, obviously because he took me in the company. So he started giving me parts literally like two weeks after I got in the company. That is and such a, Honor to have been there when he was there. I mean, what a don't, don't you just love that Mr. B hired you? What a thing! Like, there's not many people that can say that these days. It was pretty. It was pretty crazy. I mean, I was hired with three other dancers, and and it, it was just weird because we were, you know, when he would come to the school to watch classes or to rehearse us in workshop or anything, it was like everybody knew right away. 
Mr. B's here, Mr. B's here. And we would back out of the hallways when he would pass. And all of us guys, I mean, this is so old school. We would bow while he was walking by. And all of the girls would curtsy. Stop all the it! Girls would curtsy. <laughs> you know, it was just like royalty. So it was, it was pretty, pretty amazing. I cannot you know? even imagine that happening today. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Not for anybody, but I love that it happened for him. He was, yeah. you just, I just, I only hear stories. That's all I know. And you just hear the, the absolute love everybody had for this man and respect. And so I'm just, that's such a cool thing that that's how your career started. Can we go back to when, how, how did you get into ballet? Oh God. Um, you know, I, I used to, my mother was a, uh, she became a hoop dancer on the Navajo reservation. And she was the first and only woman at that time when she was a teenager years ago that was a hoop dancer because it was only, it was only allowed for men to oh. do that. And so my, my grandfather was a sort of a famous drummer. He was a famous drummer on the reservation. And so he taught her the dance and he sang and he did all that stuff. So my mother taught me how to do that. And we would be in front of um, my dad, my grandfather's shack on the reservation. She was teaching me while my grandfather was playing the drum and singing. And that was my first flight into dan the dance world. That's incredible. So I... Um, I was watching the Ed Sullivan show one night with my parents, Ed Sullivan. I mean, this is how old I am, right? So there was, there was a show that was great. It was called the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> and uh, Patty and Eddie were dancing on Ed Sullivan. And I, they were doing rubies. And I just, I was watching him mostly because I was just like, I mean, I was fascinated by her. But just the, the, the manliness and the strength yeah. that he, from dancing, you know. I know you've met him. I mean, he's... Yeah. He's a, you know, he's he exactly, actually came to help us with rubies in the last couple times. I saw that. I was so jealous. Yeah. Such a nice man. <laughs> yeah. Very sweet. And um, so I saw him on television. And I was so... This was when I was five. And I went to my mother and I said, Mom, I, I want to do that. I want to do that kind of dancing. And that was it. She called, she got the yellow pages out. She called the only ballet school in Arizona. And um, I went to audition in shorts and a t-shirt, no shoes, nothing. And, um, and he took me, he took me, he gave me a full scholarship because Megan, there were no other guys yeah. that wanted to do this. So yeah. of course I got a <laughs> They probably almost paid you. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and um, I fell in love with it right away. I just I just loved the whole sort of that weirdness of turning your legs out and pointing your foot. Yeah. And turn turning. I mean, I was like seven years old doing, you know, thirteen pirouettes because oh, it was you know? Holy cow. Yeah. Amazing. So that's, that's how I started. That's incredible. And that did you do you have siblings? I have one one brother and two half brothers, yeah. And they were like, not for me, the ballet. No. And my brother, my 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 brother Kiko, he kind of protected me because, you know, as you get older the local television station, you know, starts filming you in rehearsal for the local Nutcracker. And I remember I went back to school after I was on the news, like at seven or eight, and all the boys were just pushing me around and teasing me. And my brother was my protector. He's the one who, you know, kind of got everybody to leave me alone. That's great. That's yeah. awesome that you had that. And then how did how did SAB come on your, your radar in New York City Ballet? I guess New York City Ballet was on your radar from the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> well, no. New York City Ballet, I didn't even know there was some a, a, such a thing. I only knew of American Ballet Theater because they traveled all over the world. And, you know, I knew of Ballet West. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and because... Uh, Me too, because I'm from Utah. So that was like, uh, that and San Francisco was all I knew about. Yeah, I had I had Valley West posters, like calendars and all that stuff with each dancer. And I was just like, oh my God, this is, this is what I want to do. Um, with SAB, it was a different thing. Um, there was a talent scout that found my parents. Uh, I did this nutcracker performance thing in, in phoenix and she went backstage and she introduced herself to me and then she met my parents and she said she said you have to this boy has to go to new york or russia and i was like i was i don't know i was 11 going i'm I, what's russia <laughs> but but my parents were like i think maybe new york is better yeah so so my mom and dad saved up money, put me and my mom on a flight to New York. We stayed with my aunt in the Bronx, and we went to SAB, because that's what this woman said, we should go to School of American Valley. And I auditioned, and my, the two people that auditioned me were Chinkovsky and uh, Natasha Glebov, uh-huh. the, the director at the time. And uh, they gave me a scholarship, so I was there, and that was my beginning of SAB. At what and age? The, uh, that was 11. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, you know what? We couldn't even afford to buy the ticket or whatever, but they scraped up all their money, and they sent me with my mother. That's And so I cool. stayed there for two months, um, and I got injured because my growing pains really, really got bad. But um, there's this this is a good story because I didn't know the New York City Ballet. I thought it was the School of American Ballet Theater. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this big, huge man, huge guy comes. He was bald, or almost bald, and he was in a beautiful suit. And he, he, he looked at me and he looked at my mom and he said, would you like to watch men's class? And it was intermediate men's class. And I'd never been in a class with all men, only girls. Right. And so, so he took us in, he sat us down, he sat with us, and he looked at the class. Then he got up and he left. It was Lincoln Kirstein. <laughs> I was like, who was that? <laughs> <laughs> but he, Lincoln Kirstein, who started the school, took us in. And we sat down. It was it was it was so surreal. Amazing. You know, for me also, uh, because we were in Juilliard. Yeah. You were never in Juilliard, but we were on the third floor. And um, for me, it was like walking into a room that was from Alice in Wonderland. Like the doors were really huge, and you have to walk through. But it was it was a really kind of a, a a moving and inspirational experience for me because I'd never been to New York, never been to right. a school like that, never been to a class with all men. Yeah. So it was it was pretty amazing. Pretty That's amazing. amazing. And then when did you move to New York full time? Uh, when I was thirteen. So that would have been nineteen seventy eight, I think. And you yeah. moved by yourself. My parents moved. We all moved to um, Queens. Uh, we had a two-bedroom, small little apartment, but um, it turned out to turned out to be horrible. My my parents hated living there. Yeah. And I met one of my friends, who's still my friend to this day, Jefferson Baum, and uh, we moved into um, an apartment together. Soon, at thirteen, if you can imagine, he was. 15. That's incredible. And uh, he. We got kicked out of the apartment because we were renting the apartment from somebody who was renting it from somebody else. So we got thrown out of the apartment, had nowhere to go, and our other two friends were living in Eddie Valella's building. Uh huh. So talk about big circle. Yeah. Okay. So we go to them and we say we have nowhere to live. We have our two suitcases. And we, we sneak in to Eddie's building, and we're living with these other other two boys without Eddie knowing. But uh, so 
and we were going to the school every day. So we just spend all our time at the school or in the apartment. And so one day, one day we decided to have a double tour competition in the apartment. We just <laughs> were double tour, double tour, double tour. You know, and, then, and apparently downstairs in Eddie's apartment, the chandelier was sort of like this. <laughs> so, so Eddie, my idol of all time, knocks on the door and Jefferson and I have to hide under our beds because he doesn't know we're living there. Eddie comes in and he's talking to Afshin and Einar and he's saying, what is going on up here? You guys are making so much noise. My chandelier is swinging across the room. <laughs> and, and he sees us hiding under the bed. So we get out, we say, we're so sorry. You know, we just have nowhere to live. And, you know, it, it, we go to the school. I mean, everything you could imagine we, was coming out of our mouth just to make sure we had a place to live. And so we said, can we please live here? There's plenty of room and, and you know, we, we all get along. We're really good friends. He said, okay. And he charges 175 a month a piece to live in that apartment. So that was my beginning in New York. I was just like, wow, that's amazing. My idol lives downstairs. I'm living in his house. <laughs> so it was great. What street was it on? 69th. Uh-huh. Between Columbus and Broadway. Is that the... Um, Hotel des Artistes, or no, that's on 67th. So if you think further over, well, there's a famous uh, Japanese restaurant right there that's probably not open now, but it's um, it was it was a great block. Great that's block. so cool. Yeah, that's so cool. What great memories. So yeah, as I was kind of thinking about uh, your career, I kind of in my head identify it as the Heather Watts years and the Wendy Whalen years, but you can tell me like how, how you, how you saw it. I mean, was it, was it like that? You were such an early partner for such a legendary ballerina. And then, and then you had such great years with Wendy too. Do you, do you kind of define it in that way yourself? You know, it's weird because I, I remember Heather and I were very, we were very, very close, very close friends and me and Damien and Heather, we had a house together in Connecticut and, um, um, after I retired, of course, I moved away. But um, yeah, no, it was it was confusing in the beginning with Heather because Peter paired me up with her almost immediately, and um, he choreographed a ballet called Two uh, Two Solo Pian Two Concerto for Two Solo Pianos, and um, brilliant music. And um, he was using this core boy, me. Um, next to Heather and Eve Anderson. And to me, they were just like these huge stars. And I was just like, why? And how old why? were you? I was 16, 17. What? And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, your career was and, just... And the so thing weird. about it is that it's so weird. It's just all over the place. But I remember Peter going to Mr. B and saying, you know, I'm choreographing on this boy with Heather. He's opposite Eve Anderson. And, and Mr. B said, do it, do it. And whenever you can use Heather and Jock. And I didn't, I didn't understand it. I, I was just so natural. I was like, you know what? I was like your brother. Naturally I could partner. Uh -huh. And so could your and so could your brother. And I understood what Peter wanted. And so I, I just did whatever I could to do that because I was more comfortable behind a woman uh -huh. than I was doing a solo. Right. So, you know, it was, um, it was, there was no time to think. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? I yeah. just did, I, was, I just did what I was told. And did you have anxiety for the, sh the shows as they came about or you were just like in the zone? Uh, of, of course I had nerves, but I never showed my nerves. That's one thing I, I can say about Native American Indians is that we don't show that we're nervous. So, um, you know, it was just all inside. Mm -hmm. But when I was dancing, I just felt free enough to do whatever I was told. And I, I just That's did great. it. Yeah. That's I mean, great. 
it's hard when I when I like right now when I teach dancers and I coach dancers and do whatever from Zoom, obviously. You know, I I I try to break that barrier of um, of the nerve sight. You can't show any nerves. I have to tell you a story about you, actually. Um, I was warming up, and you were doing your debut. For was I crying? Was I was I crying? No, 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 no. <laughs> I was warming up. You came out for your debut in Beze de la Fe. And I think, who were you dancing with? I can't remember. Joaquin. Uh, Joaquin. Okay, so that was your debut. I came, I used to warm up in the wings backstage. Right. You could watch while warming up. You know, so when, I, no one does what, what you did. You, were, you would be like in the wing, holding on to the boom, the light. Exactly. You're like almost on stage. Maybe some tondus ended up visible. <laughs> but it's cool. I mean, I, I love that you did that. But no one else does that now. Everyone's like... Way yeah. far away from the stage, or they're just watching. It's like, but that, yeah, yeah, you had that. I I watched every single performance until the day I left. That's amazing. But I saw. I remember you came out. And you did that pas de deux, and I remember thinking, all of a sudden, it was like, you know how you turn on a light switch? I was like, I was like, the light switch came on, and I was like, that <laughs> is a ballerina. Aww. That is a ballerina. She just today became a ballerina. <laughs> uh, you know that ballet? It kind of taught me how. I, it just kind of. I don't know. As as I performed it with the lighting and the music, I found it to be really special. And you have to have that kind of feeling to to make it look. Yeah. The right way. So yeah, that ballet is really special to me. But that like means a lot that you say that. Thank you. It was it was, it was like it was a pivotal moment that I saw. From you, and I was just like, "Thank God," because <laughs> <laughs> we need that. You know, yeah. we need the reinforcement and uh, troops. Yeah, with what, with 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 what Mr. B did and what Peter did, you know, and with what Jerry did, you know, you, they saw the talent and they saw who they needed to nurture and who they needed to push forward into the future of ballet. You yeah. know, and that's, um, it's very rarely seen, mm -hmm. but that was a pivotal moment for me. That that's was beautiful. Sweet. You know, Peter told me that once. He said, I see my job as um, someone that's supposed to figure out people's potential and, and talent and, and, and give them opportunities. Like, that's how he really saw his job. And, and obviously, Mr. B was the same. Yeah. Can you yeah. talk a little bit, since you were there for it, because... You know, us in the company now, we're, we are kind of still going through this transition between the time that we had with Peter and now John and Wendy. How was it when it transitioned from Balanchine to Peter? Were, was it an intense time? Did it happen easily? Like, how did you guys experience it as dancers? It was confusing, Megan. It was, it was very confusing because I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, I didn't, I didn't realize, I wasn't old enough to realize what was actually happening. And, um, you know, because he died in 83, so I'd only worked with him for two years. And my whole perspective was Peter, because Peter, to me, was like my New York father. You know, and in a lot of ways, Heather was my, my mother. And then, and then she and I just became very, very close friends. So I had that sort of guidance from them both. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it, was, it was difficult because we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know where we were headed. We right. didn't know the company was going to end. Right. Kind of like you guys, you know, after <laughs> Peter was gone. It's the same thing. You're just confused and you just go, what do I do? What do I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I did was I went to class every day. I went to every rehearsal, and I just worked and worked and worked because that's all, that's all I had. That's all I had. That's all we had at the time was I'm, work. I'm curious. How was – because you go from this person that walks into a room and people bow <laughs> when, <laughs> when in his presence, and then Peter was pretty young, and he was – and it's the same as John now – you know, like kind of mid to late 30s taking over 
while you're now kind of in charge of some of your former colleagues. Right. How was that transition as you witnessed? Obviously, he was, you know, someone you respected, but was that, um, did that take time for people to take him seriously? I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. Because, um, you know, there, with, well, Peter was a huge star. I right. mean, he was a huge star. He was on the cover of Newsweek magazine, you know, wow. in Time magazine. And, you know, I, so to me, for me personally, he was a peer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was somebody who I totally respected. Later on in life, of course, we became friends. But the thing is, is that I, he was already up here. J Jerry Robbins was already up here. Uh -huh. You know, the respect that um, we gave as young dancers was all to them because we thought we don't have anybody else. Mm -hmm. Mr. B is gone. We have Peter. We have Jerry. And um, it was already a higher standard for me. So I think that uh, I had to step up quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. Because when I was promoted to principal in 1985, I was promoted next to people like, you know, Danny Duell, uh, Jacques D'Amboise, you know, those, wow. those, those huge stars, and Eve Anderson, Sean Lavery, you know, and I was like, Bart Cook, who was one of my other artists. That's incredible. I was like, I don't understand what's happening right now. I just have to continue to dance, improve, and, work. and do my, my work. Yeah. You know, I had the same thing because I got promoted way to principal way earlier than I felt that I should. And I remember coming into class the next day and Kira and Darcy were there. <laughs> and I was like, this is such a joke. Like, I just was like, is this, I mean, cause well, actually when Peter promoted uh, Joaquin and I, I, I couldn't process it. I was like, are you sure? What, what's happening? Are you sure? And, and I, it was like the whole thing was a joke to me because I had these people that I idolized like, like you did that I was like, there's no way I can take myself seriously at yeah. their level. Like, this is just ridiculous. Yeah. It, it, it just, it was so weird, you know, and I admired like the Duell brothers. Joe was a principal. Danny was a principal. I mean, and Suze, there was Suzanne in the corner taking class. <laughs> I was just like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Those are some of the most amazing years that you were there for. I have to say, that's incredible. That you yeah. got to be there and have that fuel you. And what a what yeah. a blessing, you know? Like, how incredible. It was it was hard. It was really hard. But uh, you know, it was um, it was also it was my job. It was my job to show up and do what I was told and improve and. Um, I think I was promoted when I was 20. So by 25, I kind of was working my own style into things. And um, Peter would come back after a premiere or something and go, that was good. And then he'd walk away. But, you know, I, I just feel like, I'd be like, what, what would <laughs> I don't yeah, understand. More information. The fact that I, what, <laughs> Yeah, can you tell me what was good so I could work on something else? But, uh, you know, that's just the way it was then. You know, you just did your work, and I'd go home and be home by 11.30, have my dinner, and go to sleep and wake up and do it all again. And Heather, was she um, you know, just, supportive of you being in these big roles and taking care of her? Yeah, um, I think what happened um, with that is that... Uh, Magic Flute, the ballet that Peter made on me and Katrina Killian in the school. I've done Mr. it. B yes, I know, I know. Mr. B brought that to the company the year that I got into the company. And um, I think that um, somebody got injured, and so Heather had to replace. I think Dar she had to re replace Darcy. And so Peter said to her, he said, you know, there's this boy I want you to dance with. He's in the core. He's very good. And she was like, I'm not, she was, she was like, I'm not dancing with a, a 17 year old boy, 16 year old boy. And, um, we got into a studio and we started rehearsing and Peter said, you're, you're going to regret it if you say no. And we did the pas de deux 
and I was very careful with her because this was Heather Watts. Yeah. And um, we got through the pot again. She looked at Peter and she said, "This is great. Let's just do this." <laughs> you know, she Amazing. was like, "Yeah, I, I was because I was I like I told you I was more comfortable behind than I yeah. was in the solo." Yeah. So yeah, I mean that was the beginning of, of our partnership together. And how long did it last for? What were the highlights for you? Um. Oh God. We it's danced a big question. together. So we danced together so much. But the one thing that I love is that um, when we would we would re we rehearsed you know Nutcracker, Padida, the Cavalier, and Sugar Plum until we got it. You know she had to tell me how to hold her and, and how to push her and do this and that. And um, I remember once we started doing the Padida together, we'd never rehearse it. We'd never rehearse it because we thought okay. We're just going to go through this, you know, mark a few things and do this, and we'll see what happens. She would challenge me. She would take off for a turn, and she'd do three pirouettes before I even grabbed her waist. Okay. And, but that was so terrifying to me that I would have to run forward and grab her. But it was exciting because yeah. she, she always did that sort of stuff to me. Like if she was all the way in a diagonal. And she had to do an arabesque, and I had to grab her at some point, like in I'm old fashion. She would just take off, and she would hold it until I got her. And that those exciting things were really valuable to me because I thought, you know, this, she's challenging me, and I'm going to meet her there. So, yeah. like that kind of stuff. Those sounds, values. Sounds very were, like Suzanne Farrell style, like. Yeah. Go out there and take huge risks, and it and it's different every night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to say that to Wendy um, every time we did Ag on Potida, um, we'd be ready to go on stage, and I'd say to her, "Hey, what kind of story are we saying tonight? What are we telling tonight?" She'd go, "I don't know," and I'd go, "Well, let's do it." And she goes, "I'll meet you there." <laughs> so we <we'd> go. <laughs> Sounds up, like Wendy. <laughs> we didn't. Uh, we didn't know what was going to happen, but it was always exciting. That is so cool. And when did you, um, when, what, was there a transition period between partnering Heather a lot and then, and then mostly Wendy? Like it kind of, it kind of went through the motions. Um, you know, like I started when, when Heather was asking out of a few valets and stuff that she just, you know, we all do that, of course. Yeah. Um, we transformed into the Wendy Whale and Jock Soda relationship. And I had to tell Wendy certain things like don't work so hard. Don't, you know, uh -huh. don't, don't take off. Don't. So then suddenly you're the senior person. Yeah, totally. Totally. And, um, it, it just, it just became a partnership through transition. Uh -huh. And, um, I just found that I could really, dance with, with Wendy, you know, with Heather, it was like one body. Mm -hmm. We were one body. We weren't separate. Uh -huh. And so I, I had to teach Wendy that. Also. Uh -huh. That's cool. It was, it was really cool. Yeah. That's plus, cool. plus I was going to retire at 30. And, um, Why? I, I just, I just thought I'm done. It's enough. Yeah. And, uh, I remember I got into a studio with Chris and Wendy, and that was the beginning of ten more years of my dancing. Yeah, it was kind of I was kind of like, why should I stop now? Look what I have! Totally. I have this beautiful, beautiful ballerina. She's willing to do whatever I want to do, whatever Chris wants to do, and it, it just became that that sort of relationship. So it was, it was great. Can you talk about? being a part of the creative process and bringing a choreographer's ideas to life, especially Chris, he'll sometimes really put it on the dancer. Like what kind of, how, how would a lift evolve and, and that kind of thing. Was it a super collaborative process between the three of you when you guys would make a pas de deux? Totally, totally a collaborative thing. Um, I learned how to, how to do that with Peter and Heather. You oh, know, we, that's right. 
because um, when Peter finally um, choreographed um, Ecstatic Orange uh -huh. in that middle part of it, um, it was, that was a collaborative thing. You know, there were certain moments where we were just like, we, there's no way we can do that. But Peter was um, young enough so he could actually demonstrate a lot of it too. That's true. And um, so what, when he would do it, I would think, I would look at him choreograph and I'd see him do it and the roughness in between that I had to smooth out, you know, because she barely touches the floor. Right. Uh, it was the same with Wendy and Chris. Um, when uh, Chris started choreographing California, um, we had no we had no idea. Chris and I were living together at the time, and um, you know we'd go home and talk about it. You know, talk about what should go here, what should go there. And he was very frustrated with the first part of it that he was choreographing Chris. Because it was just, the music was just too weird, and it was right after the first movement. Mm -hmm. And um, I said to him, I remember we went home, and I said, Chris, just take a deep breath. And I said, think about octopus. How the octopus float in the ocean. I said, that's Wendy. I said, I can make her move like that in the air, on the ground, do all of that stuff. So that was, that was an idea, right? So then he got it, and then he started. But then the second part of it, the last part of it, when he played that music for me, um, I started laughing because that was the music to a movie yeah. that <laughs> Nicole Kidman did with Tom, Tom Cruise. <laughs> He's like, this is just too weird. But, <laughs> but Wendy was so, you know what she was? She was so willing to be manipulated Mm -hmm. That 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 was that was the beginning of that part of it. So it was it was it was it was a great moment to be in a room to think what is going to happen. Is right? that the first ballet that you guys did together? The three of you. Um, he did one before. Um, gosh, I can't. I'm so old. I can't remember. It was a very classical ballet with me and Monique uh, Munier, um and a big core and. It was it was really beautiful, but it was it was very classical. And I remember telling Chris we were in London, and I said to Chris, I said we went to a, a modern museum there in London, and he was listening to music while we were walking through the museum, watch looking at all this beautiful art. And I told him, I said, you know, you you have to get away from classical. Get away from classical. Leotards, tights, that's it. And um, that's when he came up with the idea. And I said, all you got to do is take me and Wendy in a room for two hours and something will, something will happen. And that was the beginning of Paul Fulman. And if you take it from that very beginning to where it was the last thing you guys did together after the rain or liturgy? Uh, after the rain. Liturgy was the year before. After the rain was the last valley that he made. How, how did it all evolve um, to that moment? Oh, gosh, Megan, you're asking me hard questions. <laughs> we all want to know. He um, took us into a room, and we started working. She had her point shoes on, and I was ballet, 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 ballet. We didn't know what was going to happen or evolve. And he, Chris got so frustrated after that first day. I remember him saying, he called Wendy that night, he called me, and he said, we'll work, erase everything that we've done today. We're going to do new, fresh stuff tomorrow. And he asked her if she would dance uh, barefoot. And she, you know, being a ballerina, she was like, I, I, don't, I don't think that's a great idea, but I'll start in ballet shoes. And uh, I was like, I'll dance barefoot. You know, <laughs> it's like, I'm fine. And he just, he brought in new music. And uh, we just started very slowly, and his ideas just kind of... Chris used to write everything down. He wrote everything down, shapes, uh, steps, everything was always noted. Okay. So, so he, he started with us, and it, it just kind of evolved. You know, it just... It was totally different, and it was something we'd never done before. And he, he was going in a different direction. Yeah. So I, 
I don't, I, I'll tell you this. When, because the valley is all fast, 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 rain in the back and all that stuff. And then we run out after we've changed into our practically nothing. And, and um, we, we started the pot of it and it was dead silence in the, in the audience. Not a word, nothing, no coughs, nothing. And um, we went through the whole thing, and the tempo was brilliant, and it just it just happened. Then we ended. Curtain came down. Nothing from the audience. Dead silence. Curtain goes up. We're off stage. Applause, applause, applause. And then we run out, and it was like a wall of like an ocean wave hit us of just applause. And Wendy and I backed up. I, we were holding each other so tight by the hand. And we just backed up and we were like, what's happening right now? What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> <laughs> so then after that, we were like, oh, okay. So, you know, the collaboration works. Yeah. You know? So you didn't yeah. quite know it was super special until the audience's response? No clue. Wow. I did. I didn't. I, I mean, people looked at it that potted and thought, that is really beautiful. That's, you know. But it's beautiful. also the way that you both danced it together. You know, I've seen it done a lot of times now. It's never been quite the same as you. The feeling that you guys gave it, it was like you were made out of glass. She was like made out of glass, and you were just so careful with her, and, and, and she was weightless, and, and it's yeah. just incredible. You know, the, um, I've, I've posted a couple of people in it, and I, I, the one thing that I say is that there, there's no acting. You cannot act ever in this sort of part of it. You just have to be yourself, be your person, and let it come out through That's your great. body. I agree. You know, you know I, just, I just don't. If you're acting in that kind of a it's role. It's not something to emote. No. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. yeah, you guys just embody it. Yeah. It was it was a, it was really special and it was a really nice gift yeah. um, for, for my retirement. So exactly, like, exactly. How early in your career did you start teaching at SAB? Nineteen ninety six. And how did you how did you enjoy or not enjoy the juggle with your career? You know, to uh, go you and Peter Bull going back and forth from across the plaza to teach and then have an important performance right after that. Did that ever like get to you? Like, in I just want to focus on my show. Yeah. In the beginning it did. In the beginning it did because I was like, why, why yeah. do I have to, why do I have to do another hour and a half at the school yeah. and then run upstairs or run to the theater and rehearse? Um, it, it's funny because Stanley was still living. Uh, Stanley Williams was still alive. And I told him, I remember going up to him and saying, I'm so nervous. I never taught. I don't know why Peter wants me to do this. Um, but what was explained to me by Stanley, he said, he said, Peter said this to me too. He said, Mr. B wanted his top dancers to start teaching at the school while they were dancing so that they could get into that career later on because they know he was like they know they know they understand so um i was like okay i'm gonna do this I'm gonna teach and um it was difficult in the beginning because i was like oh god what if i correct somebody and they get really upset with me and you know that as a teacher also i mean you're just yeah. kind of like oh. but you have to have that authority you know like sammy did he he just was he ruled the room. Right. Nobody spoke. Nobody did anything. I didn't want that to happen to me. But if you don't get the attention, you can't give the attention. Right. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like you Especially have to. Especially with the boys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. It's, it's hard because, um, you know, I taught a few company classes. and um, That's the hardest the thing I say. That's the, the hardest. Noise in the, room, the noise in the room and the talking and all that stuff. And I, I went up to Peter. I remember the last time I talked for the company, I said, Peter, I, can't, I just can't do it because I need their concentration. Yeah. 
And um, that's one thing that I learned how to control. Just to, um, you know, like if I was correcting you, for instance, or if I was correcting another ballerina, like I'm doing now, I, I, there's a way of doing it without being a total bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you have to use your psychology and yeah. you have to go into their So mind. that they listen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then they get it. So that's, uh, that's one thing I had to learn how to do. And, and, you know, I got it. I was there for 20 years teaching. That's incredible. Yeah. So, um, so you it's, uh, definitely had a tone to your classes. And I, I loved your partnering class because it would just start off with, you wouldn't even say anything. You would just grab a girl and you'd be like, okay, go to Susu. And you would just start playing around and making things. And we would all just get into place and, and follow along. But it was like, uh, it had a special tone to it that made you kind of like, okay, we're, we're doing this now and then take it very seriously. And, and also yeah. it was fun because it was like, maybe a little bit of the process of your career being in the room so many times for new works. Like you kind of gave that to us in the partnering class. It wasn't like, this is the combination. It was like, almost like we were in the creative process with you as you, yeah. as you made the combination. So that was kind of cool. Now that I look back. I'm not sure if you remember though, because um, I, I would um, interact steps and combinations from different ballets. Like the like Libus Leader, all of a sudden I go, okay, do Ponche and then grab her hand here, twist her and do Javalpe. That to me was fun because yeah. when I was in the school years, years, so many years ago, it was very basic. Yeah. You know, it was crammy. It was like pick her up in a an arabesque and pump yeah. her back <laughs> and down. Yeah. <laughs> what, I, what I try to do is I try to make it a musical sort of like combination where you involve Mr. B's steps. Yeah. Basically. I mean, back so, then I didn't know that they were from ballets, you know, cause I didn't know the ballets like, yeah. like I do now, but that's cool. I didn't know that's what we were doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's uh, you've done be this leader, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, look at all those combinations. It's I just, love that ballet. It's brilliant. Uh, it's brilliant. Yeah. Or so Bram Schoenberg. Right. First move. Second movement, third movement. You right, know, right, I, right, right. There's a did, ton there. You're right. You did second movement. I right? do third. Third, okay. Second movement. There's that saute yes. step, two promenade, yes. lean off. I yeah. mean, there's so that's, much. Peter also told me. Um, he said, "Jock, you because he would watch every now and then me teach pas de deux. Yeah. He, at the class, he'd give me corrections, and he often said, "Do the counterbalance." let the girl do this, you know, this and this and off. And, you know, that's because so that's, hard for boys to learn, even girls to learn to give their weight. Yeah. It's, it's really hard. So I started doing that and that's, that was kind of the beginning of the whole thing. What if there's any like young boys watching, what is your partnering advice? Like, is it like weight train? Is it like play around with weight? Like how do you, what's, and especially now, all of these kids, they can't touch anyone. They're, they're not getting to partners. So like, do you have any, how, how, I mean, when you're such a natural partner, maybe it's hard to describe how to learn it and the concepts of putting her weight in your hand and leaning her away from you. But like, what are some of your basics that you kind of know that it's like the first correction you give someone and um, it's like like what you just said. Counterbalance is very very hard, and um, choreographers are getting more and more advanced every single day. So um, you know, I try to teach that counterbalance. I know they can't touch each other anymore. Um, it and and you know what's really super hard now is teaching from Zoom because you're not there. You're not there to demonstrate. You're not there totally. to tell them how to do it. I worked with um, Davide uh -huh. uh, a week and a half ago uh, in Swan Lake. He, he just out of nowhere found me on Facebook and mess messaged me or Instagram. And For he everyone said, watching, you... he's, a, he's a core member of New York City Ballet right now. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's wonderful. And I didn't get to work with him for very long, but um, they were rehearsing Swan Lake. 
And I was like, yes, of course, you know, I did it many times and blah, blah, blah. And it was so strange and weird to do it from Zoom. But, yeah. you know, you, you have to be so creative in how you explain each and everything that you do. And, you know, Swan Lake, you've done Swan Lake. It's, you think it's basic. We've done it all our whole lives. We've learned it and all that stuff. But it's really not. Yeah. It's, it's very intense and hard to make it look the way you want it to look. Yeah. So it was really, it was, it was a good experience for me because I got to, um, you know, work with two people who yeah. lived together, two people who live together who, who don't have COVID yeah. and could be in the room. Yeah. And, uh, and it was, it was interesting. It was a, it's a different dynamic, but you have to find different ways of telling people how to do certain things. Yeah. And, um, like I said, you you have to word it better than showing it. Yeah, now. it almost makes you as a teacher say it better than you would as if unless as if unless you were in the room. Like yeah. like I find not being able to go up and just adjust something or tell someone exactly I have to then give them more of the idea of the feeling of what they should feel in their body and it's almost better teaching. Yeah. It's it's weird but it it works. Yeah. I mean that's, um, you know, Susie Handel, who I adore, and um, I'm so, I was so sad of her passing. Yeah. Um, she did that from her chair. That's true. She, she would. That's true. Give me a, she'd give me a correction, and I'd be like, oh, I guess I better think about what I just did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she that. was so good at it. because Yeah, she, she was. She was brilliant, you know? And, um, Jerry, the same, same with Jerry Robbins, you know, he, I learned to actually walk in front of him and look at him demonstrate. And that's when I realized uh, I was doing everything completely wrong. Cause I could, if you're in back of him, how are you going to learn? Yeah. 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 Walk around and see what he's doing and then you get it. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, with Peter, Peter was, Peter could dance circles around me when he started choreographing on me. So, I mean, it was, uh, and he could, he could, um, push me uh -huh. he could push me to a limit where I thought I couldn't even go to. Yeah. So that was, that was, um, also great, you know, and did and you Chris, ever have to, to weight train Jock? Uh, I never did. Never. You just were strong enough and then got stronger through all of the work. Dancing all day, doing my push-ups, my sit-ups, all that stuff. Because you know, it, it, imagine if I dropped Heather, that right. would be the end of my career. Right, right, <laughs> right. I mean, I don't know if people that just watch these ballets. I don't think they have the proper understanding for uh, kind of how you evolved partnering in the ballet industry with such a high skill level and all of the new ballets that were choreographed on you, like especially all of those Peter ballets, like the guys now, it's like, they're like, I have to grab her like this and my shoulders all twisted. And you just did it like no big deal, you know? And like, you just figured it out or do you, do you think it was just like in you or are you stubborn and you just always wanted to get it right? Or, I mean, you had to, I, I remember you always being towards the end, really, really exhausted. Like you were killing yourselves and the ballets that you, really the the amazing ballets that you did were like so brutal on the guy like you you created some of the hardest things that there are what what is that in you just it's easy for you or you're a masochist <laughs> I, I think it was just sheer determination uh-huh and, and i you know i later on when i got older i would look at those ballets and those pot and, and all that stuff and i think oh Peter was elevating, he was elevating partner. He was. To a point where if you can't come up to his, to the standard, then, you know, I never, ever wanted to change anything, you know? As I got older, maybe 38 to 40, you know, I did have to change some stuff, but it was uh, the creative process that was really kind of very fulfilling. So you, know, you never and, allowed yourself to say, that's ridiculous, that's too hard? No. 
That's incredible. No, because, because I always thought that I could do it. That's and if awesome. I couldn't do it, I was very upset with myself. Wow. So, you know, it was, it was just, uh, you know, like, th listen, I saw your brother partner many month, many ballerinas, and he was sensational. I was like this, like, like Robbie, Tyler, Jared, yeah. these partners are incredible. And, 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 and the thing about it is that if you can, for me, if I could disappear and just make the ballerina shown, that was my, that was, that was, that was my, I was so happy, so happy because she was floating. She yeah, yeah, was, yeah. You know, it, you didn't see me at all. You just saw her. And that, that to me was the most important thing. That's incredible. But like also such a sacrifice on your body, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right? So when you retired, was it just like so nice not to have to pick anything up? <laughs> <laughs> Except my vacuum, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> or were you kind of missing it? Do you like find heavy stuff around the house and just make it look beautiful? <laughs> I, I uh, you know what? I do miss, I miss that actual feeling of being on stage and doing stuff like that. Because uh, that was so special to me. And, you know, but I get to do it every now and then. You know, yeah. I performed with Wendy um, a few years ago in Brooklyn. I'm going to be performing next year. At, cool. You know, it's just, but not partnering, yeah, yeah. not lifting, but theatrical stuff. Cool. But you know, I do miss, I do miss it. I miss, um. I mean, after the rain was was so special, yeah. and I, it would be so great to just break it out and go out yeah, there. Yeah, and yeah. But there's just no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the guys that do it now, I mean, we always kind of look at them like, and that's why I'm telling you this. Like, I don't think you understand. Like, to follow in your footsteps and do what you created is a is really hard. Like, like we always the guys that have that task of of your rep. Like, we always kind of look at them like, how's your back today? <laughs> like, it's really, they, they, it, no one's quite been as um, resilient as you were. So just, so you know, you're just incredible in all of our eyes and so nice to talk to you and I miss you and I miss getting to see you dance, but I have really great memories of it. So I, w I was there. Hey, listen, I had, I had a long career. And um, now I'm up here in the mountains, and I'm perfectly happy. So, and and I see all of you dance all the time when you know the, the, it comes online and stuff like that, which makes me so happy. Yeah, um, that's cool. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one thing that the one last thing I said to Peter, um, we were doing uh, Luis, my husband, wanting me to do one last symphony in three movements, and I was like, hell no. <laughs> I was like, I've heard it's is, the hardest thing. It is the hardest bat, one of the hardest ballets I've ever done. It and doesn't I did it look like it. Forever, I did it forever. You did, and, and uh, so I, I went to Peter and I said, Peter, for my last season, can I just do the opening night of Symphony in Three? And he said, What? <laughs> and I said, I said, I know. I told you I never wanted to do this again. I love the ballet to death. And he said, okay, you're cast. Who do you want to do it with? And I said, Wendy. And he went, you better go ask her yourself. <laughs> 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 so I left his office and I walked down to the stage where her dressing room was. I knocked on her door and I said, Wendy, please, <laughs> will you do one last symphony in three? And she was like, what? <laughs> So we, I mean, we didn't, I, I don't even think we rehearsed it. We probably just did one rehearsal yeah. and then did it. Yeah. But I remember thinking, oh my God, this is the, the hardest thing I've ever done. By the, did you ever do any part in that? Did you do the ballerina there? No, no, no. I've never done a principal or soloist role in the ballet, just the core. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I... I, somehow I had in my mind that you did the Potter Um 
but no. we did it and it was fun and it was it was it was well it went well and all that stuff but i was just like i was just like oh boy this is it's not easy it's also like Dancing. a great reminder to be like okay i can be done now because <laughs> this yeah. stuff is just so hard so that's that's what I was going to tell you. So that rehearsal that we had on stage the, uh, the day of the performance, I remember turning around and looking at the whole core and everybody in the core, the Demi's, all everyone, every single person. And I turned to Wendy and I said, "This is why I want to not do this ballet because every single dancer on stage was my student." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "It's These time." Are my students. <laughs> So that was the end of the end of that. So. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I don't want to take any more of your time, Jock, but thank you so much for sharing great stories and things I, I never knew about you. It's just so great to catch up. Anytime, anytime. Thank Please, you. if you talk to your brother, send him my love. Okay? Oh, I will. I absolutely will. Okay. Right. Big kiss to Luis. And to you. Take, take care. care. Right? Bye.